Good evening. You're watching the news on Croatian television. Prime Minister Andrei Plenković has been in Mostar since Monday to soothe the concerns of the Croat community in Bosnia-Herzegovina over the implications last week's ruling by the UN War Crimes Tribunal may have for them. The PM met with representatives of the Croat National Assembly, a political organization, and the Croat member of Bosnia and Herzegovina's presidency, Dragan Čović. He pledged to help Croats in their struggle for equality as one of the country's three constituent peoples. I want to express my sorrow and offer condolences for all of the victims, not only ones related to the war crimes covered by this ruling, but all of the war crimes committed in Bosnia and Herzegovina, including ones committed against Croats. In the election year ahead, we would like all of the Croat political parties to show their unity and to prepare for the challenges of the elections. What we need today is peace in this region. We need to offer some support to those who may be tempted by a ruling like this to reopen the door to hatred towards another ethnic group. President Kolinda Grabar-Kitarovic is in New York, where she will be taking part in a meeting of the UN Security Council tomorrow that will address the end of the work of the UN War Crimes Tribunal in The Hague. Ahead of that meeting, the president met today with UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. We did not get into the details of the ruling because that is not his job, but the UN Secretary General did say that this ruling, any ruling, was a judgment of individuals, not countries. I express concern over the rhetoric that I've heard over the past few days that's been directed at Croatia. My primary interest is to avert any kind of conflict or dispute between Bosniaks and Croats in Bosnia and Herzegovina. SDP leader Davor Bernardic has announced his party is drafting legislation that would make salary policy more equitable. The SDP is preparing a legislative package that would address the minimum wage, public sector salaries and introduce a sunshine law. 40% of the average monthly salary is too little for anyone to survive on. Our task is to right this wrong by 2021 through legislation that would ensure that the minimal salary is around 60% of the average salary. Interest rates are low right now, but will they stay that way and for how long? These were the questions addressed today at a conference organized by employers and bankers in Zagreb. Because interest rates are low, depositors are getting next to nothing for keeping their money in the bank. But pension funds are struggling even more due to low yields. What we can conclude by looking back at interest rate trends over the last few years in our immediate vicinity in the large economies like the U.S., the EU, and monetary policy is that there are a lot of signals telling us the time of low interest rates may be coming to an end. Croatia's Bank for Reconstruction and Development and the European Investment Bank have signed a 100 million euro loan contract. The money will be used to fund small to mid-sized enterprises, primarily in tourism, manufacturing and the service industry. We have signed 19 contracts with the EIB, including this one, that are worth a total of 2.6 billion euros. This has enabled us to finance more than 3,500 projects in Croatia. A few weeks ago, we signed a contract of 250 million in, in, in support of, uh, uh, of SMEs. This is 100 million in support of mid-caps, so we are covering the entire range of um, small and medium corporates. Although Croatia's farmers do not produce enough to meet domestic demand, Croatia does manage to export some of its agricultural products. This was part of the message sent today from a conference on the role of rural development in the food production chain. The government is hoping to bolster production under a rural development plan that's backed by 2.4 billion euros in funding until 2020. I believe that without collaborating, without networks of producers, small family-run farms will not be able to compete more significantly on the market. That's why we have allocated funding. We want our producers to succeed, to be more efficient and competitive, and to boost their sales at home and on the foreign markets. In sports, Croatia is preparing to host the European Handball Championships. It is also gearing up to play. Coach Lino Cervar has unveiled his list of 28 players for the tournament, which will open on January 12th. 
Phase one of practice begins in Ivanichgrad later this month, while the final phase starts after the new year in Split. Croatia will play a warm-up game, game against Montenegro on January 5th. Our practice window is short. Time is not on our side. We are going to try a three-pronged approach to improve our physical conditioning, our game tactics and skills, and our mental toughness, so that we can meet all of the challenges the European Championships will bring. Tomorrow's forecast calls for mostly sunny skies throughout the country. The morning may bring some traces of fog to the interior. There will be a light to moderate west-northwesterly wind along the shore. Morning lows will range from minus 5 to 0 in the interior and from 1 to 7 on the coast. The day's highs will be between 5 and 10 degrees inland and between 10 and 15 on the Adriatic. Sunny skies will dominate in the interior on Thursday as well, with only some traces of morning fog. There will be a southwesterly wind, and temperatures will rise slightly. Those southwesterly winds will pick up further on Friday and bring in clouds and rain. Precipitation is expected in the mountains, the central regions, and by evening and overnight in the east. It will get colder on Saturday when rain turns to sleet and snow. On the coast, rain will set in in the north on Thursday, while the rest of the coast will stay mostly dry. But by Friday and Saturday, it will be wet up and down the shore, with heavier downpours expected in places. Southwesterly and westerly winds will rise. The north coast, however, will see a shift to a northeasterly on Saturday, reversing the warming trend. <laughs> And that brings us to the end of our program. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow.